Hello, Hello everyone. everyone. Welcome to the Gamer Agenda Podcast, where our agenda is to be gay and play games. I'm Spider Star You, a sassy gamer from New York who keeps it real and keeps it 100. And I'm Dreddians, a gay ass artist and professional primate pal. This is episode 7 of the podcast and part 4 of the Purple Pamphlet series. If you stuck around and listened to our other free episodes, uh, yo, congratulations. Thanks for listening. This is it. This is Yay. it, Luigi. The final <laughs> final part of our of our Purple Pamphlet series. Uh, if you haven't watched the other three episodes, uh, I definitely recommend it because this is a lot to take in. I mean, obviously, we split this up into four podcasts. This is originally just... Well, this is originally just going to be one podcast, and then yeah. it became two, and then it became four, because we didn't want to, like, smother y'all with, like, two-hour-long podcasts, because um, it's really important that we go over this. But anyways, uh, brief rundown of the Purple Pamphlet. It was a anti-homosexual propaganda piece made in the 1960s uh in, in florida uh around the uh around the time of like the red scare and the lesser known lavender scare which was basically like the red scare for gay people a lot of gay people were getting outed in their communities uh removed from jobs because uh people thought like you know homosexuality was immoral and they're they're like a tool being used by communists to ruin the American way. So the Purple Pamphlet was basically made as a way to warn normal people. By the way, that's how they refer to straight people in this. They call them normal people. Yeah. Uh, it was a way to warn normal people about the dangers of homosexuality, their their lifestyle, the, the types of words they use. Yeah, and this pamphlet called Homosexuality and Citizenship in Florida just goes over so many different things of a uh, perspective of a conservative religious group that's like focusing on gay people being evil, gay people being, you know, just this wicked force that's, you know, trying to corrupt the children, like they're worse than child molesters. Like it's it's very deep, deep stuff, which is why we had to split it up because I, I really think splitting it up in different parts, like you'll get you'll really get to get the specific um, rhetoric in each part of the pamphlet and really digest digest it from you know our perspective as gay people and in this part we're going to go over more of the gay glossary so we're going to go over more of the gay terminology that was used back then according to this pamphlet and we're also going to be going over psychopathic sex crimes ah! yeah we get over we go over to the deviant acts that they mention and the psychopathic sex crimes that they mention, and a lot of just... A lot of it, it's a, okay, as just a little bit of a, like, a little preemptive taste for y'all, the, the so-called psychopathic sex crimes, they're, like, it's weird because, you know, there are some things on there which, yeah, they are sex crimes, you know, rape, uh, incest, bestiality, child molestation, like, yeah, those are crimes, those are bad, but then you have, like, a lot of just, like, do you know, fetish stuff that's not even honestly it's not even like limited to gay people like they talk about uh you know like uh necrophilia fetishes uh statue fetishes something like statue that statue fetishes yeah, yeah. and necrophilia uh, necrophilia yeah necrophilia which like uh i don't know how how often that happens and i have no i i don't know why it has anything to do with gay people it's not like you know only gay people can be necrophiles but it's it's really weird they they have some weird sort of like mixture of actual legitimate sex crimes and then just fetish stuff that you know you could just go on like Pornhub and look it up or like Rule Thirty Four and you'll just see it right there. Like back in the sixties, these were psychopathic sex crimes. Yeah. Um. Uh, so it's definitely a bit of like a culture shock. It is, and you know, w while also talking about the language and then their talk about psychopathic sex crimes, we're also going to be talking about how a lot of this stuff relates to modern day stuff so mm -hmm. like for example conservatives calling gay people groomers or you know young people having to fight back against you know a lot of this just complete ignorance that you really see when you look at this pamphlet this stuff has always existed 
The only thing that's more on our side nowadays is we have more supporters nowadays, thank God. But back then, you know, a lot of a lot of stuff in this pamphlet is something that they would really believe. Yeah, the the purpose of going over this pamphlet is obviously, you know, it's a, it, it's an important part of queer history. Um, and you know, we've been kind of like poking fun at it and having some jokes over how stupid it sounds and how like outdated parts of it is. But a lot of it is also not outdated, and that's kind of yeah. scary. Like again, you know, yeah. we're we're gonna we're gonna compare and contrast to like uh, how similar this sort of is to to modern day. Uh, again, you know, the gay people are groomers. You know, uh, the evil you know gay agenda. The 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 the, the trannies want to rape women and molest children and. You know, and and the sad trend of, like, younger queer people not understanding old queer terminology and calling it offensive or, like, arguing with each other over identities and, and uh, you know, fetishes. Uh, there's a lot of, like, anti-sex and anti-queer uh, propaganda that is present not just in this book, but in a lot of stuff from back then, and a lot of it still exists today. Uh, so we're gonna just kind of go over like some examples of that and, and compare it to the pamphlet here. Yeah, well put, Dreadians, well put. And I'm really excited for everyone to get into this and listen to what we have to say. Like Dreadians said, we kind of go back and forth like we, it is a very serious thing, but you know, we also poke a little fun at it because, you know, that's just how we handle, you know, handle things like that because, you know, sometimes you just gotta poke fun to... Ease, ease off because you know when you read things like this you could feel a little bit helpless because you'll be like oh my gosh you know a lot of this relates to today and like you get scared and so sometimes you just have to poke a little fun to just kind of ease yourself that's at least that's how i handle stress sometimes you know and you know so we're going to talk about the terminology we're going to talk about um we're going to be talking about um this the deviant acts the glossary and then we're going to go over more of how it relates to the modern age and our final thoughts overall on the pamphlet so we're excited yeah. for you guys to listen, and why don't we just get back into the pamphlet? We're gonna go off. Let's just, yeah, let's get into it. Yes. Moving on, uh, we've got she, a male homosexual. What the hell? She? <laughs> There's just all these ties to to uh, male homosexuals and femininity, you know, they're all queens. Yeah, because we know, oh yeah, remember, male homosexuals have female brains, sexual mm-hmm. inversion. They're pretty mm-hmm. much just, they're pretty much, male homosexuals are pretty much just girls. But then, you know, if one of them actually says, oh, call me a woman. I was like, oh, well, you're a man. You're a born a man. Exactly. Oh, my female brain is just making me so emotional. <laughs> um, 69. Sex act where two persons commit oral intercourse on each other simultaneously. Partial 69. Sex act wherein a homosexual is the recipient of an act of fellatio, but does not return the act. Selfish ass. Blowjob. <laughs> I was going to say the same thing, selfish. <laughs> Blowjob. An act of fellatio, either given, active, or received. Passive. 71. Intercourse by anus. <laughs> oh, not the term anus again. Anus! Oh my god. Makes me think of Angus beef. <laughs> Anus beef. Oh, uh, no. Married. When two homosexuals go together exclusively. Not considered married unless they provide for each other. Husband. The aggressive, active partner of two married homosexuals. Wife. The recipient, passive partner of two married homosexuals. See, there we go again. We have this sort of thing where, like, the, the man, the penis haver, is the aggressive one. They're the, they're the one that's always giving, and they're aggressive, and their partner, the, the, the woman, the female, the wife, the vagina haver, they're always passive and receiving. And it's like, that's something you kind of see even to this day where people always kind of pigeonhole gay people. Like, oh, who's the man? Like, to find out who's the top or bottom? Like, why are you asking that to people? That's none of your business who's the top or who's the bottom. That's none of your business. Do you ask straight people how they have sex? Do you just go up to straight people like, hey, do you, do, do you guys, do, do, do you eat pussy? Like, do, do, and does, 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 she, does she eat, does she suck you off? Like, you would never ask that, but then you just go up to gay people, hey, uh, who's the man? Who's the top or who's the bottom? Like, that's none of your business. I'm and also, start asking it back. 
unless they're okay and, and unless it's in a gay friendly space where they feel comfortable that's totally different but i'm talking about straight excuse me normal people going up to gay people and asking that that's nosy inappropriate normal people. nosy normal people and then also when they say that oh not every gay relationship has a man and woman the whole point of being gay is it's two men or two women right the whole point of being gay is that's what it is stop asking who's the man who's the woman there's no woman in a gay man relationship with two gay men it's we're both men there's no woman same with and, and to uh, a relationship with two women there's no man there's no who's the man who's the husband there's no man it's two women ah it just gets me upset because I, it's something that happens to this day where people will say yeah. things like that it's 2023 y'all come on my man, okay. my woman, my girl, and my lover. Terms of endearment between homosexuals. Wow. Dinge queen. A black homosexual. And in the pamphlet, they kind of use some outdated language here to describe. Yeah, um, not, not the, not the N-word, the other, the other N-word. And we're, yeah. we're both, we're both white as fuck, so we're, we're not gonna, we're not gonna risk saying that. But, but yeah, it is, it is, um, said like that in the, in the pamphlet. Also, if watching on YouTube, hella, you'll see. Hella disrespectful, dinge queen, like dinge, like, like dingy, like dirty, like, oh my yeah. god. Like, what a terrible way to refer to a human being. Oh, my God. Yeah, my my heart goes out to, like, all the, the black homosexuals in the 60s because, like, you couldn't even, like, you couldn't even really have solidarity with your own fellow gays, like. No. Ugh. They had a heart for being black and then had a heart for being gay. They had a double whammy. It's not, it's the hardest for them. I feel, mm -hmm. oh, it's terrible. Seafood. Homosexuals in the Navy. In the Navy. Do you give a blowjob said as, I'd like to do you? Huh, that's interesting. Because normally when someone says, I want to do you, um, in, in, in the modern age, they usually mean, like, penetration. But yeah. in, this, in this case, it, it only means uh, giving someone a blowjob. Interesting. Crushed fruit. A term to use a term used to characterize a homosexual who tries to deny he is a homosexual. Okay, that one's kinda <laughs> that one's kinda funny. <laughs> um gay crowd. Any gathering of homosexuals. Didn't we just get Yeah, we just we, we just, just read had that. that one. Yeah. They, they didn't they didn't proofread their own damn book. There's actually there's actually been a couple of typos in this book that we've that we've noticed. I mean, it makes sense because like you know, around this time, everything would have been, like, hand, like, you know, they would have actually, like, been typing this with, like, a typewriter and all. So, so it makes sense that there are some, like, uh, errors here. But I just think it's kind of funny. Um, screaming bitch or flaming bitch. An exhibitionist <laughs> who outwardly proclaims his homosexuality and his homosexual intentions. Wow. <laughs> Kind of like that. Kind of sounds like dope as hell. It's like, yeah, I'm a screaming bitch. <laughs> That's the funny thing is, is calling someone a screaming bitch might be a bit different nowadays. I I have seen use of the word flaming, but it's yes. not really one that's like not. It's not super popular anymore. No, 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 no. Um, sister, a homosexual. Going in drag. Wearing a costume usually complete with female wig, makeup, and women's clothes. Piss elegant. A homosexual who brags or is outwardly conceited. Ugh. Chicken. An extremely young-looking homosexual or a homosexual under 21 years. Wow. <laughs> Dreamboat. A term used to characterize an unusually attractive homosexual. Oh, he's a dreamboat. Chris Evans is a dreamboat! <laughs> Woo! This year's trade is next year's competition, a phrase used by homosexuals to indicate that a person who participates in the passive role will eventually go over to the active state. So when, uh, when, 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 uh, power bottoms become tops. Oh, start from the bottom, now we hear. <laughs> <laughs> Atomism. A form of exhibition in which the subject exhibits himself in the nude. Analingus. Sexual pleasure obtained through the use of the mouth on the anus. 
<laughs> That's that word anus again. Oh my god. Anus. That's today's word, kids. If you if you're watching this on YouTube, comment anus in the comments right now. <laughs> Hopefully you have a normal anus. <laughs> Not a gayness. Not a gay anus. A gayness. Gay, gay Luigi. <laughs> gay Luigi. Auto eroticism, sexual love or fixation on oneself. Cain complex, rivalry between brothers and sisters over the family possessions or the affection of one or both of the parents. Complex. The pattern of man's mental process, his reaction to his environment, and each there is represented elements of our foreknowing, primary instincts, together with instinctive elements of a lower order. Cunnilingus, apposition of the tongue or mouth to the vulva, oral copulation. Ecstasy, intoxication. That moment when the saddest has reached a zenith of affectivity. The sensation of pain is suppressed by the stronger urge and sensation of desire. Electrocomplex. Sexual desire of the daughter towards her father with hostility towards her mother. Enuritics. Psychopaths were interested in urine. <laughs> <laughs> those, those, those piss obsessed psychopaths. Those piss elegant psychopaths. <laughs> Yeah, because all the, all the craziest guys out there are into pee. <laughs> Exhibitionism. Spectacular complex. The exposure of the genitalia for the purpose of sexual gratification. The genitalia are usually in a condition of excitement, and the act is more prevalent among males. Pathological display of the ego in general. <laughs> Fellatio. Oral copulation. Use of the mouth on the male sex organs. Fetish, a symbol arousing sexual excitation, the substitution of a part of the body or an article of the sexual or an article for the sexual object. Fetishism, sexual abnormality in which sexual stimulation or gratification is derived through some article or part of the sexual object. Fire water complex. This condition is often found as a part of the symptom complex occurring in sexually psychopathic incendiarists after lighting a fire in a, after lighting a fire there's a period of exhibitionism followed by a desire to urinate <laughs> so I think this is like people who are attracted to starting fires and then putting them out with their pee wow very very uh very uh, uh specific flagellation a psychosexual perversion characterized by a passion for whipping encountered among sadomasochists may be either active or passive. Fratures, addicts of a form of masturbation closely associated with buttock fetishism. The male <laughs> subject usually rubs or presses against the buttocks of a female and sometimes a male while in a crowd. In this condition, there is usually a homosexual element. Oh no! <laughs> Are you a frater? <laughs> I might be. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know what's so funny? There's actually a term that they use nowadays for this. You want to know what it's called? Is it called hot dogging? <laughs> it's called hot dogging. <laughs> that, see, that makes perfect sense because, like, I get the image in my head immediately. Oh, man. And the good thing, you know, hey, the, the great thing about being a frater or a hot dogger is you can be either normal or gay. So <laughs> hot dog, hot dog, hot diggity dog. Me and the normal guys, hey, we're hot doggers. <laughs> like you could bow up your 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 normal pals and be like, hey, we're all fraters and or we're all hot doggers and let's hot let's hot some dogs tonight. Come on, boys, let's hot some dogs. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, this that that one made me laugh. That that was a good one. <laughs> I just love how like in detail they they go into the sex. I feel like I'm on a fucking natural geographic documentary. Closely associated with butt talk fetishism. Butt talk fetishists. Butt talk. Do you fetishize butt talk, Dreadians? Hell yeah, I do. I don't, I might not have a dog to hot with, but <laughs> you can be a fraternal spirit. Yes. <laughs> By the way, 
I think something got a bit lost in translation of what I said. While this talk of frater and fraturism, it was funny. I'm not going to lie, it was funny. You know, I interpreted the word differently. I interpreted it as a consensual act. So a consensual act of rubbing your dick against a man's butt or a woman's butt. Which is why I said terms like hot dogging and I, I said things like, oh, you know, me and my straight homies both love that, so we're fraters. But no, 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 no. Absolutely not. The actual definition of frater is way different than what I described. The definition for frater and fraturism is, and I quote, a paraphilic interest in rubbing, usually one's pelvic area or erect penis against a non-consenting person for sexual pleasure. I very much misinterpreted this because what I described, you know, like me and my homies loving, what I described is a consensual act. You know, so a consensual act of rubbing your dick against a, a man or a woman's butt. A consensual person consenting to that, right? So both parties are consenting. Both parties are cool with it. That's what I described. And that is not being a frater, and that's not fraturism. I just want to make sure that that's very clear because what I described and my idea of it was consensual. That is not frater, and that is not fraturism. And I'm sorry for, you know, just speaking without really <laughs> knowing what exactly what I'm saying. And I just, I really wanted to highlight this because I think it's educational for everyone. And I definitely don't want people to just go around saying, like, oh, I'm a frater as well because I like that. No, the act of hot dogging and things like that, that is not the same thing as being a frater. Because, you know, here at the Game Merge and the podcast, we only support any sort of, you know, sexuality that is consensual not non-consensual we do not support that so we do not support frater or fraturism but anything that's consensual between two adults absolutely support that so i just want to make sure that's clear and that everyone knows where i was coming from with what i was saying what me and dreadians were talking about and let's get back to the next word gerontophilia the choice of older persons of the opposite sex as sexual objects or partners that's basically like the opposite of pedophilia, where you're like attracted to old people. <laughs> so like you're attracted, like for example, cougars. Yeah, or like sometimes it's like really old people. Yeah. Heterosexual, pertaining Ooh. to the opposite sex. Ew. <laughs> Ew, you're into the opposite sex. Ew. Homosexuality, a condition Ooh. in which there is a sexual fixation or erotic sexual attachment to persons of the same sex incest complex desire for sexual relations with a near relative usually a parent oh kleptomania the desire to steal or appropriate articles in many cases psychopathic personalities manifesting the impulsive desire to steal come under the heating of fetish thieves and during the act of stealing receive sexual gratification so they have huh. sexual gratification from being stolen from or, or stealing, I guess. I don't usually see wow. kleptomania described as a fetish, but, I mean, I guess to be fair, a, a fetish doesn't necessarily always have to be something that gives you a boner. It's just, you know, something that you're, like, intensely, like, like attracted to, and it doesn't necessarily have to be sexual attraction. But, yeah, never seen kleptomania described like that before. <laughs> Okay, oh, this one's interesting. This one's spelled with a K. I usually see this spelled with a C. Coprolagnia, a condition usually found in masochism wherein the, subject, wherein the subject is sexually excited through the senses of taste and smell by articles of filth, such as excrement, urine, and feces. Ew. Yeah, so, like, copro, coprophilia and urophilia, those are, like, the sexual attractions to, to poop and pee. All right. Libido. The energy of the sexual instincts, which is normally directed to an outside object. Lust murder. Murder committed in sadistic, brutal fashion. The victim's body usually shows evidence of being mutilated, particularly the genitalia. Ah! Masochism. The correlative complex of sadism, which, like its correlative, may be heterosexual or homosexual. The desire to experience pain and suffering. Masturbation. Causation of sexual excitement through manual manipulation of the genitalia. Autoeroticism through friction or rubbing. Mind you, uh, masturbation is also something very looked down upon in this age. Even by, even by normal people, it was, it was a sin to masturbate. Yep. Necrophilia. 
sexual intercourse with the dead. A what? <laughs> I what? don't, I don't really see, um, uh, ne- necrophilia is not very common, um, in any community, I think. Thank, thank God. Finally, see, see normal people, something me, us, and you can relate on. There's been, there's a lot of mentions of necrophilia in this, in this pamphlet. I, I looked ahead a couple of, 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 uh, pages, like, like, how, how often is it happening? Like, you know, pedophilia, I guess I can understand, you know, people are, are scared of groomers. Are, are people really scared of necrophiles? It's like, ah, there's an endemic of people digging up our cemeteries and fucking the corpses. <laughs> I don't know. Nymphomania, a morbid sexual desire in the female. Oedipus complex, sexual desire of the son for his mother. With hostility to the father. Poor Oedipus, man. Like, uh, I I don't know how many of you listening here are are familiar with the story of Oedipus, but basically, like, uh, real quick, it, it was like a play about a guy who, um, when he was a baby, like the he had he was he was his parents were like given this fate that, um, uh, yeah, this baby when he grows up he's gonna kill his father. And have sex with his mother or something like that. Um, so they're like, oh no, we don't want that to happen. So they they left him. Um, uh, in, in like the Greek and Roman age, it was it was it was common to leave a child uh, for uh, to be exposed. Like not necessary. You're not necessarily like. See, like, if you, like, killed your ba- your own baby with, like, your bare hands, like, you bludgeoned them to death or you, or you smothered them or whatever, like, that's evil. Like, like everyone would look down upon you. But, you know, if you left your baby out in the open and something happened to it, technically you're not the one killing it. So, mm. and definitely in a lot of, like, Greek and Roman legends, uh, you'd have babies being left to be, uh, for, to die of exposure. And so... Oedipus's parents, uh, they got this, this, this horrible fate, and they left him to die, and he was, a, he was adopted by another family, um, and when Oedipus grows up, he learns of this, the, he, uh, talks to this wise man who tells him of his fate, like, oh, you're going to kill your father and have sex with your mother, and Oedipus is like, oh no, I don't want to do that, uh, I, I can't do that to my parents, I love them, and so he leaves his adopted family, um, and he's on his own, and he ends up coming into a conflict with this old man, and he 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 pushes this old man, and and you know he's this really feeble old guy, so the so the push kills him, um, and the people who are with the old man, it's like, hey, that was our king. Well, now you're our you're our king now because you killed our old king, and Oedipus is like, sweet, cool, I'm the king now, and um, so he's a king now, and he weds the queen. And and he has sex with her and he has children, but it turns out that old man he killed was his blood dad, his original father, and so he and he did end up following. He ended up uh, sealing his fate of killing his father and killing his mother, but uh, or killing his father and having sex with his mother. Um, and when he finds out about this, he's like, "Oh God, what have I done?" And he punishes himself by he stabs himself in the eyes and he banishes himself from his kingdom. So. Poor Oedipus, like, he, he wanted to do every he did everything he could to avoid having sex with his mother, and he, like, tried to kill himself after he found out he did it, but because of the Oedipus complex and all, now he's just remembered as the guy who fucked his mom, but that's what he, he didn't want that. <laughs> Jeez. I mean, he's not real, he's just a story character, but still, I feel bad for him. Um... Oralism. Sexual pleasure obtained through the use of the mouth on the sexual organs. Pederasty. Sodomy. Insertion of the penis in the anus for the purpose of sexual gratification. This term has been used for the practice of the act of sodomy upon children by adults. Pedophilia. The condition in which a child or adolescent is chosen as the sexual object. Perversion. The deviation of the sexual impulse from its normal goal. Normal goal. Pervert. One who indulges in unnatural sexual acts or fantasies. Pygmalionism. The sexual desire for a statue or statues. A statue fetish. 
again, not a fetish I seek very commonly. I, I, I'm wondering what was going, like, in the heads of the people who were writing this book. Is like, are, are uh, coprophiliacs, necrophiliacs, uh, uh, Pygmalionism people, or were they really that common enough to provide a definition for them? I mean, who has a statue fetish? That's kind of news to me. I mean, look, some statues be thick. They got the cheeks and stuff, but... Yeah, I mean, I, I've seen it. I've seen it, but it's not really that common. Um, yeah. Uh, sadism. A perversion in which the libido becomes misdirected or perverted so that the act of inflicting pain becomes in itself an object of sexual gratification. Sapphism. Titillation of the clitoris through mutual masturbation or cunniling is practiced by females. Sapphic is also another way to describe a lesbian, like as, as sapphics, and it comes from um, Sapphos, who was a, a, a poet well known for her poetry. She's kind of one of the earliest known historical lesbians. Um, she was a poet from the island of Lesbos, um, which is where the word lesbian comes from. Uh, someone who comes mm. from the island of Lesbos would be a lesbian. Um, yeah. <laughs> and Sappho made a lot of poet, a lot of romantic poetry, usually towards a lot of female lovers that she had. Um, mm. Sodomy, taking into the mouth or anus the sexual organ of any other person or animal, or placing one sexual organ in the mouth or anus of any other person or animal. Transvestism. Sexual perversion characterized by the wearing of the clothes of the opposite sex and the desire to assume the name and role of the opposite sex. Yeah, so so back back then, uh, you didn't really have transgender as a term yet. They were all called transvestites. Um, and even, even like, actual trans people from back then would call themselves transvestites. Um, yeah, transvestites, yeah. So it's, it's kind of, uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, transvestite is seen as a bad word now. It's, it's, it's kind of like almost a slur um really so yeah I, or it's a, it's a, it's offensive at least you're know, calling someone a transvestite um because it's oh ooh, excuse me um because it's usually used as like an insult it's like oh you transvestite you're just a man in a dress oh um, like saying you're a crossdresser yeah yeah um but you know people who grew up around this time you know old queers and all they still they would still call themselves transvestites because that's the language they grew up with so sometimes they get accused for being uh you know transphobic or whatever queer phobic because they're still using the old language and it's like well you know that's what they grew up with i mean it's not quite the same as you know your grandpa jim wanting to use the n-word but <laughs> yeah <laughs> trivity the intimate homosexual relationship between females lesbians the active individual assumes the male character towards the female partner in the sexual acts and i usually see uh Okay, that's weird. So I feel like they, I feel like they, I, maybe, I don't know, maybe that was the definition back then. I feel like they mixed up the definitions of sapphism and, and trivity because, like, yeah, sapphics are lesbians. Um, and tri uh, tribidism or tribidism, that's, you know, rubbing pussies together. Um, at least that's Ooh. how it's used now. I don't know if it was swap back then or if this is just, like, an error or something, but, huh. Interesting. <laughs> Rubbing pussies together. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what it is. <laughs> so wait, and you're a trip... I I'm a tripper. Tripper. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a tribidism is just a fancy way of saying scissoring. Scissor oh, scissoring! Scissor sister! I'm, I'm a scissor sister. And you're a, bu <laughs> you're a bun brother. I'm a bun brother. <laughs> Triolism. A form of exhibition in which the subject desires to perform the sexual act with several partners or in the presence of several pe persons. So I guess it's a fancy way of saying orgy. Orgy? Urolagnia, a condition found in sadomasochism and fetishism in which the person is sexually aroused through the sight and odor of urine. Voyeurism, the desire to see or to be witness to sexual practices. Zoophilia, a passion for animals, often fetishistic in nature. Erotic sexual relationship with animals. Again, like, I don't know how, how, how common was this happening that, or I guess this is just what, you know, this is being written by normal people. They, this is just what they think uh, gay people do. It's like, all they do is 
69 and smell poop and pee and get horny for <laughs> statues and fuck animals and corpses. <laughs> That's what these people think that gay people do. That's just my, my average bucket list on a, on, a, on a Wednesday afternoon. Oh, and, and also don't forget statues. Yeah, the statues. Oh, yeah. I, I can't wait to, to tri- trip all over those statues. <laughs> All right, next we have Psychopathic Sex Crimes. That's the name of my new band. (laughs) Psychopathy, as defined in Black's Law Dictionary. Mental disorder in general. More commonly, mental disorder not amounting to insanity or taking to a specific form of a psychoneurosis, but characterized by a defect of character or personality, eccentricity, emotional instability, inadequacy or perversity of conduct under conceit and suspiciousness or lack of common sense social feeling self-control truthfulness energy or persistence sadism sexual gratification resulting from inflicting pain on another person masochism sexual gratification resulting from inflicting pain upon himself flagellation a masochist with a passion to be whipped resulting in sexual gratification. Peakerism. Sexual criminals, most frequently sadists, who stab, their wi- who stab their victims, usually girls or women, with sharp instruments, deriving sexual gratification from the sight of blood and the suffering of the victim. Oh my god. Anthropophagy. A sadistic sexual perversion leading to rape, mutilation, and cannibalism. Yeah, again, how often is cannibalism happening here? Oh my and, god. Okay, like again, this isn't uh, this is this section's called psych- psychopathic sex crimes. So this isn't uh, this isn't like, oh, this is all gay people do. This is just like a general list of sex crimes, but still it's like how often is this happening? And again, here we here we go. We have necrophilia again, uh, a sexual perversion in which dead bodies are violated. And lastly, we got pyromania. Sexual gratification resulting from lighting fires and watching them burn. All right, on this next page, we've got some more sex crimes that are illegal, but not quite as extreme. Um, or I don't sexual even think these are nuisances. These aren't these aren't even crimes. I think they're just like you know a list a list of like dirty sex acts. Sexual nuisances, voyeurism, a peeping tom. One who obtains sexual gratification from witnessing the sexual acts of others or from viewing persons in the nude. Exhibitionism. One who obtains sexual gratification from exhibiting himself in the nude or exhibiting his private parts. Fetishism. Sexual gratification obtained through handling a certain object. For example, women's panties are a part of the human body. Masturbation. Causation of sexual excitement through manual... Manipulation of the genitalia. Transvestism, a form of sexual deviation in which the person tries to play the role of the opposite sex by cross-dressing. Fritters, a form of masturbation accomplished by rubbing the genitalia against persons of either sex, occurs frequently in crowds. Kleptomania, sexual gratification resulting from stealing. Coprolagnia, sexual excitement resulting from the smell or taste of filth, like urine or feces. Urolagnia, sexual excitement resulting from the sight of urine or a person urinating. And then we have a very, and then we have a very small list of sexual obscenities, like objects that, objects or articles that are, can, that can be considered like obscene material. So we got obscene telephone calls, letters, language. Pornographic literature, photographs, and drawings. Um, and funny that they mentioned photographic images because uh, this next page is pretty. This next page is pretty intense. Um, I, I think actually this is yeah because we jumped ahead and did those other ones. So I think this is actually the last page. Yeah. Um, so so this next page, which is also the last page that we're that we're sharing. Uh, it's pretty intense, and I don't even think we can actually show a picture of it because um, it's essentially just a bunch of pictures of naked little boys and boys in their underwear. There's no like, 
There's no, like, penises or anything. It's not, like, full frontal nudity, but they are, they are in their underpants. Uh, and this is definitely, like, some sort of saucy photo shoot. Uh, photo shoot? Jesus. This is definitely some sort of saucy photo shoot of a young boy. Um, and, and reminding you, this is completely free online to read. We're not, like, on the black web here looking at these no, pictures. No. Yeah. Um, and I mentioned last episode that this book, this pamphlet got extreme backlash for, uh, you know, obscenities and, you know, pornographic material. Um, and, you know, when you're first reading this, it's like, oh, it's probably because they're detailing all these, like, gay sex acts. It's like, um, maybe it's because they got pictures of naked little boys in here. Like, they're showing these pictures as an example. Uh, a spider here, you can read the little blurb on this page. These photographs are from the catalog of a supplier of homosexual erotica. Five by seven inch prints of each pose were offered at a dollar each. The youth of the model is indicative of the frequent homosexual fixation on youth. Like, okay, there isn't an age given on this guy. It could very well be like a, a, like, like, a, I don't know, like a late teenager or something. His face is pretty young. Again, we're not going to show the pictures because uh, we're kind of walking on a thin line here. But uh, yeah, I don't, I'm not surprised that this pamphlet got trashed, even by other conservatives, because you just straight up got like, naked pictures of a, a very young looking boy whether or not he's actually of legal age he looks young and there's no age given um uh, and there's also a photo of a guy getting his dick sucked uh again yeah. no there's no like you don't actually see his dick but it, it's a dude at a glory hole and there's this like little pathetic attempt to censor his face there's like a censor bar on his face but dude's still like ass out at a bathroom stall and like you know what's going on um so I think it's very ironic that they're trying to paint images of homosexuals as these like degenerates, these these deviants, um, and then they're just going ahead and publishing this private pornographic material like out in public. It's like, can you not see what's wrong with that? So messed up. And underneath the one with the guy at the glory hole, it says. This photograph was taken by a Florida law enforcement agency of a homosexual act being performed in a public restroom. Such occurrences take place every day in virtually every city and every state. It is significantly that the removal of the toilet stall doors to facilitate photography did not deter these and numerous other practicing homosexuals. That, that's kind of epic. Like, like, they know they were getting their picture taken. They're like, whatever, I don't care. But yeah, they're... These people are getting their photos taken by law enforcement. They are taking pictures of people in the in, in the act of sex. Yeah, and that's so messed up. And like I mentioned in pre the previous uh, parts, like they this happened a lot where police would raid places and they would take pictures or there'd be a camera filming them and literally like they would try to hide their face to not be, you know, not be caught because then once you the name's out there they'll put you in a newspaper and be like oh uh bobby is gay or like oh bobby found that bathhouse like they'll put you in the news so how how horrific that law enforcement they had nothing better to do but do this take pictures of a guy just trying to get himself <laughs> trying to get just get off yeah a lot of yeah a lot of like these like oh you know person exposed for and, and this happens with with straight people too sorry normal people um, yeah, this happens with normal people too, where it's like you know someone who's having a very like private or intimate moment, and like what you know, regardless of not whether it's like you know cheating or like, or even if it's like an illegal sex act, like say they got caught like having sex with a child, like you are really putting yourself in danger taking photos of that and publishing it publicly. Like that's. You know, you can get, in, especially especially in, in matters of, like, child pornography, like, you can get in just as much trouble for distributing it as being the one to own it. Um, yeah. So it's no wonder that this book got trashed and the, the organization behind it, like, dissolved a year later because what they're doing here was, like, borderline illegal by redistributing this porn. Um and it kind of reminds me a lot of, of uh, I know, I keep talking about Twitter so much, but I really hate Twitter. It's, like, the worst place to be if you're, if you're a gay person, because, like, 99% yeah. of the time, you end up arguing with other gay people over the most useless shit. Um, and exactly. something I see... 
I'm an artist. I, I'm an artist. I am a not safer work artist. I'm a porn artist. I'm not ashamed to admit that. I draw all sorts of porn. I'm into all things. Nothing grosses me out. And if someone, yo, know, is paying me money to draw something, I'll draw it. Because it's all fictional. None of it's real. I never draw anything based off real people. Like, regardless of the content, drawing real people makes me uncomfortable. So I don't do that shit. But other than that, I pretty much draw everything. But there are a group of people, there, there's a, a group of people with a specific mindset that believes that, you know, if you draw, like, rape porn or or murder porn or any other sort of, like, highly, like, something that's highly illegal in real life but in a drawn form, like, oh, it means that you support doing that in real life. And it's like, what the fuck? Um... And so what would ha what will happen is that these people will put these artists on blast by screenshotting or, or sharing their art without their permission. Be like, oh, look at Butt Munch 69 draws. They, they drew this, like, anime girl who's 14. It's clearly they're distributing child porn and they're a pedophile. And it's like, regardless of what your personal belief on that and whether you think it's gross or not, because it's okay to find it gross. Like, you don't have to like it. But, one, the person drawing that, a, a fictional character that is in, that especially is not even in any likeness of a real person. Like, they're not a pedophile for drawing a fictional thing. Like, if you, if you look into the behind the scenes of a lot of famous cartoons, like, even kids cartoons. Like, the artists and storyboarders, they draw, like, dumb shit all the time. They draw, like, porn or meme parodies or whatever. It's kind of just a natural part of being an artist. You can see it. All the way from when humans first started making art, when they made cave paintings, there'd be like cave paintings and and statues. Like the one of the most famous statues is the Venus of Willendorf, which is basically just a big fat lady with huge boobs. And this is speculated to. There's tons of speculations over what the context of this sculpture is. Um, it could have been someone, you know, some people say, oh, like, a man made this and it's a sexual sculpture of what he found attractive. Other people say it's a, a self-portrait by a woman who is, like, looking at her own body, like, you know, you look at yourself top down. Um, whatever the reason was, you see tons of pornographic images throughout time. People like to, people have liked to draw on boobs. They love drawing dicks. Uh, if you look at the ruins of Pompeii, people are making tons of dick jokes and, and all sorts of, like, and Shakespeare even had some of the earliest examples of a your mom joke. Um, it's very natural for a human being to be interested in, in sex and to draw or write about sex. And especially when you're dealing with fictional material, that's sort of like your playground to do whatever. Because of course you can't do these things in real life. Yes, they are illegal. They are immoral when you do them to a real person. Um, so uh, anyways, I'm going off track here. These people will put the artists on blast. They'll show pictures of their work. Um, oftentimes they end up showing this pornographic work, regardless of the nature of it, regardless if you think it's right or wrong. They're showing it to their followers who are often minors, so you're showing porn to minors, and you're arguably doing something that's more illegal than the person who's drawing the porn, because the porn artist is usually someone who is like, oh, like, 18 plus only, like, I only want adults. To Even if their subject is of a child character, the people they're presenting this to are usually other, are other adults. Um, so, this purple pamphlet here, uh, reusing the pornographic images of young boys in their underwear, they're just kind of putting that out and display in public. Like, a child could be reading this book. A child's not going to get their hands on the porn. It's just ironic that they're talking about gay groomers grooming young boys with porn, and then flip a few pages, you got porn in the book. So you're kind of doing yeah. the same thing. And also, like, the pictures they show, like, we can't show this on YouTube, at all like there will not even be a little thing uh and there will be no sort of picture of these things on youtube of any of the sex acts or anything like that because that is immensely inappropriate and gross yeah completely condemn that completely because it's a little boy like that's wrong yeah and the fact is is that remember the people who made this 
were conservative and Christian, and they thought, well, maybe if we shock them, that they, that they, they'll be on our side. No, everyone's just like, no, you guys are freaks. Why did you put these pictures in your pamphlet? What? You can get your point across by not showing it. They didn't even censor any of it. Like, they did nothing. They just, they censored the guy's eyes, but they couldn't censor any of the, the picture of that kid? Yeah. Really? Like, come on. They could have done that, but they were, they were totally wrong in their perception of how they thought it would go. Because this was condemned everywhere by, by people who are on the left, people on the right. Everyone condemned us. Like, what the hell? Why are you, why is there porn in your pamphlet? And just like, oh, well, uh, like, no, just, it's totally messed up. And, you know, it's like what Jodian said, like, you talk about groomers and you talk about this stuff and then you literally post porn of kids in your pamphlet. You are insane to think that's okay. And I hope all the people who made this pamphlet are rotting in hell because that's disgusting. That's totally wrong. And the language they use throughout this pamphlet is just... It's disgusting. Use calling normal people gay people like what they said about the the um referring to certain acts because they know putting all these acts in the book like necrophilia and sadism and all this other stuff masochism they know that people would just read it and be like oh my god these gay people are just too much they're into necrophilia and they're into sadism what is that what happened to just man and woman love and that's what they will take from the pamphlet if they got past the porn part and they were okay with it. Like, they would just get the part, like, oh my god, these gay people are into all this sick stuff? They're sick freaks, they're psychopaths. So, it just shows you the misdirection of a narrative, where you could literally push crazy things onto people, and then it will just be taken as the truth. Because people didn't want to do no research. And look, I will give that people had a hard time doing research back then, right? It, it was way It's way harder to get information back then than it is now. We, uh, we can get information easily at the drop of a hat with our phones, with our computers, uh, gaming consoles that go on the internet. Like, we can get information easily. We still have libraries all over, you know, United States and all different countries in the world. We have libraries. You know, you can get information way easier now. So there's no excuse to be completely batshit insane or cr just completely wrong. Like, come on. Get your information and get your facts straight. And if it sounds like it may not be true, maybe it's not true. Oh, one gay person did something bad, so all the gay people are bad now. Oh, one person was a pedophile and they did this, so that means that's all gay people. I mean, you wouldn't want, for, for Christians and stuff out there, you wouldn't want all Christians to be perceived as bad because there are there are pastors or there are priests or nuns or whoever who are pedophiles, right? You want you wouldn't want all of you classified as that because some people are bad. I don't classify all Christians that way. I am a Christian. But would you like it if you as Christians were classified all in that way? Like how in this pamphlet all gay people are classified as child molesters and 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 wanting to do things with little boys or wanted to take pictures and stuff? No, you wouldn't like that, so don't put that on us. And really educate y'all selves that this is not something that gay people want. All right? I don't want no nudity or in, uh, a, a sexualization of any children in any media, shape, or form. Right? I don't want that at all. So don't put it on us that that's something that we want or that we just, you know, we're, we're, we're rooting for. Like, yeah, we want to do that. Like, that's – don't do that. Right? Remember what I said in the uh, bisexual podcast? Gay people, not a monolith. And we can go past just gay people, straight people, Christians, this, that, that, and the fourth. Everyone around the world is not a monolith. You can't expect everyone to think the same thing. So if someone has different beliefs, don't put that on all gay people. Put that on that one person. Don't look at, don't make us all look bad for one person's actions. Because then if that's the case, then conservatives, Christians, we're going to start doing that to you. Mm -hmm. So someone's bad in your church so or someone's bad in your a committee then all of you are bad this is the florida committee that did this even though it's 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 down for many many years it went down the next year in 1965 but i mean hey if you want to say that then i get okay are all republicans bad because they made this the sick pamphlet be real and and just look at people as individuals and not a monolith that everyone's gonna have the same opinion everyone's opinion is different and that's okay we don't all have to have the same opinion Okay, rant done. <laughs> yeah, we if both went anything, on a rant. No, go off, go off, baby. Um, if there's anything to take away from this pamphlet and our discussion on it, it's that uh, gross mischaracterization and generalization uh, leads to nothing, nothing but but nothing good, no, nothing but evil. 
uh, we see it time and time again. People are stereotyped and they're all classified. Again, like I said earlier, the us versus them mindset. Uh, you know, if you're only ever seeing yourself as the good guy and everyone else who opposes you as the bad guys, that does nothing to better your mindset. It, in fact, it makes you a more of a... Cl- uh, uh, it makes you more of a closed-minded person because it makes you unwilling to hear other people out and you start, like, characterizing people in, in your head. You start stereotyping them, making caricatures. Yeah. And, and that's, that is how we lead. That is how we, we lead into, like, racist stereotypes, uh, you know, queerphobic and transphobic stereotypes because uh, people were unable to see differences and just started demonizing and characterizing these people as evil and now we have we have pamphlets like these calling gay people groomers and you know mentioning like you know illegal acts like necrophilia and pedophilia and bestiality like the regular current occurrences in the gay community and like you know straight people sorry normal people aren't equally yeah. as capable of committing psychopathic sex crimes yeah all right, so I think we're kind of at the end of our episode here. Um, wow, that was a lot. Yeah. It was a lot Ooh. reading this pamphlet. It was, it, understand, just as hard as it was for y'all to listen to this, it was hard for us to read it. You know, it's hard to hear things like normal and gay. And, like, we joke about it a bit because, look, a bit of it is funny. But, like, in seriousness, it's, it's so messed up. Like, they really marked us as other. They marked us as other, and then it's like, well... That's what it is. You are other. You are different. You are trying to hurt our children. And you're trying to make them believe what you believe. No one's trying to make anyone believe what anyone believes. Right? That's all complete insanity. Right? I'm not trying to make anyone believe what I believe. I'm just trying to make people understand my humanity. Just like other queer people's humanity. Right? We're human beings who deserve respect. Who deserve love. Who deserve to be in families. Who deserve to have friends. Who deserve to have partners. To live a happy life. You know, I remember... A Christian, a Christian show I grew up with. It was called Kingdom Chums, and I remember they had a message in there. It was, it was a little song, but it, it it went like this: just just a just a sentence. They said, "All of God's children are beautiful like you. All of God's children deserve a good life too." They say, "Don't kill." Now that's not very odd because we're all created by God. So the Christian belief is that we are all God's children, right? That If you are a Christian, that's your belief. We are all God's children. We are all to be treated with respect and love, and we all deserve a good life. How dare you demonize anyone and say, oh, they don't deserve a good life. Everyone deserves to have a happy life, a long life, to be happy with their friends, family, lover or lovers, right? To be happy, right? We don't live a long time on this earth, so we deserve to be happy. We deserve to have a good life. Right? If you really believe in God, that's what God wants for us all, right? So don't demonize us. Don't treat us badly. Really educate yourself. If you really know, think or know someone who, you know, thinks a certain way, like, they have to understand that we are so much more than than these stereotypes and these, these crazy opinions. They're not even opinions. They're just all wrong, right? Necrophilia, s- s- masochism, s- sadism. I'm, not everyone's into all that. And also, guess what? You could be straight and be into that. So putting that on gay people is not fair. So just open your open your mind if you have any ignorant types of views against any queer people, whether it be gay people or even in- including our trans brothers and sisters and non-binary people, right? If you have any preconceived notions that may or may not be the truth, just really think about it, right? What you think may not be the total the total truth like they may tell you some things that like they're thinking they're doing this they're thinking that and it's not true like really open your mind to understand that people have different experiences and look you don't have to just sit here and be like i agree with every single thing you don't have to agree on everything but you have to respect everything because if you are a christian or you're a conservative you're supposed to believe that we're all of god's children who deserve love and respect so start showing us that you actually believe that yeah, and regardless if you're, uh, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're a Christian like Spider is, or if you're an atheist like I am, like you have to set a good example to other people. You are absolutely allowed to feel anger or pain or suffering or confusion, but don't use those emotions to hurt other people. Use those there when you feel pain when your body 
When your body sends signals to your brain to make you feel hurt, your body's trying to tell you something. Like, you know, you, you stub your toe and you're, all of a sudden your, your toe starts like, you know, swells up and starts hurting a lot. Your brain is telling, your brain is telling you, oh, your toe, your toe hurts. You know, you have to look at your toe, take care of your toe. When you feel, I believe that when you feel mental or, or, or mental anguish, that's, the, that's your brain doing the same thing, telling you that something is wrong and you have to address it. But it's like something with you. Like before you, before you go and shove your feelings onto someone else, think to yourself, why do I feel hurt? Why do I feel angry? Why does this make me angry? Why does this, why does this feel wrong to me? You need to look into yourself and soul search, you know, just think about how are you feeling and settle those feelings before you immediately just thrust all your problems onto someone else because no matter how devious or evil someone else is their pro your problems are not their problems like don't make mm -hmm. your problems their problems time and time again people have suffered because we act on our discomfort without understanding why we feel uncomfortable and it's okay to feel uncomfortable but it's not okay to use your uncomfortableness as a weapon to demonize other people and say they're making me feel uncomfortable so they must they must be the ones doing something wrong it's not my fault that i'm uncomfortable exactly right it's it's about time people really open their minds open their hearts you know if you're uncomfortable you know if you have any gay friends or queer friends and you don't understand them ask some questions right just if they're really your friend and like they're you're someone you're close to ask them some questions you know maybe some things that you believe may not actually be what it is and then, you know, if you really still believe these things, you know, just, I don't, I don't know, like, we're all human beings that deserve a good life. I don't want, you know, it's so funny, the people who want the bad things for gay people or trans people, I want everyone to live a good, a, a happy life, a long life. I, I wish they could say the same about me. I wish they could say the same about Dreadians. Because a lot of those people who think like this in this pamphlet... They don't want us to have a good life. They don't want us to live a long life. They want us to be miserable. They want us to be obedient to their religion. They want us to literally be subservient and literally bow our heads and be like, I'm so sorry for just being a sinful person. I'm sorry. I should. I, sh I, I deserve to be celibate and not be in a relationship. You're right. No, hell to the no. It's so crazy to me to hear a straight person, or excuse me, a normal person, talk about <laughs> celibacy and things like that. Like, you're in a relationship with a woman. You're in a relationship with a, your wife or you're a woman in a relationship with a, your husband. You have kids. You have a partner. And you have the audacity to say to me that I should be celibate? Go fuck yourself. I'm saying that with total conviction. If you really believe that, completely go away. Because there is no way that I will ever accept that I have to stay alone for all my life. Do you know how terrible it is to say to a human being, you should be alone? Why? My religion says that. Yeah, you, you need to be alone. I'll be over here with my wife, though. Like, you okay? I'll be here with my wife. But you, you be alone. Like, you, you be obedient. Like, no. Uh-uh. We're past things like that. We're past that crazy belief. Because there is no agree to disagree on people who think that we're evil. Period. Yeah. And I know that we've been saying a bunch of times, like, oh, I hope the people who wrote this are burning in hell. Well, that's because they're already dead. You know, I'm sure they've already yeah. lived their long, luxurious lives. Um, they're dead now. And, you know, people say, you know, oh, don't speak ill of the dead. Well, I mean, it doesn't matter anymore because they're gone. So, and we have to deal with the, the ramifications of their actions, um, the words that they've said to us, and the effect that this propaganda has on our well-being throughout the years because even though this book did not do well and you know it's horribly outdated uh, it still is a reflection of what people genuinely believed back then and still possibly believe now yeah absolutely 100 percent. that's why this pamphlet was such an important read and i'm glad y'all stayed stuck around for all the parts for this pamphlet 
I'm so proud that we actually went through it. I really thought that this was going to be just one episode. <laughs> Silly me. Mm -hmm. I thought this was going to be just one episode. It was going to be like just us reading the pamphlet. But, you know, we had so much to say because the re our reactions to, to reading the pamphlet, it's, it was tough. It was hard because so much of that stuff, it, some of it relates to today. The same, like we said at the beginning, the same mistakes being repeated where, oh, gay people are recruiters, gay people are, are, are groomers. It's the same, the same rhetoric. It's time to wake up and stop listening to fear, right? Because these people exist to make you fearful, right? They don't want you to live a happy life. They want you to be fearful. They want you to be scared. Yeah, oh, these gay people are gonna make your kid gay. These th people are gonna make your kid trans. Understand this, there is no possible way of someone hearing that I'm gay and that will make them gay. That's not true because then if that's the case, Every gay person would be straight because they always hear about heterosexuality. But guess what? That's not how it works. So get it out of your head that someone's going to hear that someone's gay and they're going to just become gay. Or they hear a trans person. Oh my God, they're going to just transform into a trans person. That's not how that works. Right? Understand that. That is not how it works. Mm -mm. And I think we're kind of, yeah, like we're, we're kind of at the end of it. So we're thankful so much for everyone to hearing our episode of the pamphlet we will do more topics about queer history there's so much to cover like we can go on to the hiv and aids crisis we can talk about um the the lavender scare where this took place the like the time the timeline where this took place we could talk more about the lavender scare we didn't talk too much about it so there's more information and more history that we can cover that we definitely will be covering in the future so for sure for sure um and if you have any uh, recommendations uh, for topics you want to hear us talk about, uh, please shoot us a message on our social media or our email. Uh, it's better you want to you wanna share those uh, sources for us? Yes. Okay. This has been the Gamer Agenda Podcast. Thanks so much for listening to us, and here's where you can follow us. Instagram, the Gamer Agenda. Twitter, at Gamer Agenda Pod. That's Gamer Agenda Pod. Pod spelled P O D. We also have a Facebook page, The Gamer Agenda. Give us a like on Facebook. We have an email, The Gamer Agenda at gmail.com. Like, like what Jedian said, feel free to contact us with any questions, ideas, or hey, maybe you want to guest star someday. Maybe, maybe you have something to say and you want, you want to be heard on our podcast. All that can be handled through an email. Email us at The Gamer Agenda at gmail.com and we also can be found all over the internet here's where you can follow and find our podcast just some places spotify itunes apple podcasts google podcasts iheart radio youtube and if you're watching on youtube make sure you like this video amazon music and much much more so wherever you get your podcasts you can listen to us so wherever it is make sure you give us a five star review we appreciate that so much and share with your friends Maybe you have queer friends or, hey, even straight friends who want to just, you know, know the tea or know about games. We got you covered on both because remember, you get the best of both with the gamer agenda. Mm -hmm. And then for me, I am Spider Star You. You can follow me on Twitter and YouTube at Spider Star You, Spider Star You on YouTube. And then I have a PayPal if you want to, you know, donate a dollar or more. You know, I edit the podcast and it takes up a huge part of my day. So if you would just... If you've enjoyed these podcasts and you feel like, you know, you want to just drop a dollar or two, I'd appreciate that so much. My PayPal is paypal.me slash Michael William Chavez. And feel free to, you know, help, help a dude out. Why not? And if you want to follow me, you can follow me on Twitter at Dredians. That's spelled D-R-E-A-D-I-A-N-Z. The Z is there because I'm a cool, edgy girl. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram also at Dreadians, and you can send some money my way through my Kofi, also at Dreadians. Uh, I am an artist. I have my commissions are open right now, so you could follow me for those, uh, or you could just follow me for some fun ramblings. Either way, I hope you, I really hope you guys enjoyed listening to us talk about this because it's so, so important to know your queer history um, and to prevent the same mistakes from the past from happening again because you know no matter how much of a good person you think you are you're not immune to propaganda you might have you might be the victim of saying some nasty things that you didn't even know were nasty so it's good to understand 
uh, the dangers of these stereotypes and to avoid falling in the traps uh, that people put up that make you believe, oh, well, hey, maybe these people are kind of gross because, no, everyone deserves your respect and you deserve to hear everyone out. Um, you make you make your own decisions instead of blindly believing what other people tell you to. Exactly. Well put, Dreadians. All right, that's the end of our podcast. Thank you, everyone who listened to every single part. It's been a journey. We appreciate it so much. And more to come. More to come, y'all. Thank you so much, everyone. And take care. Goodbye. Peace.